guys, so I noticed <laughs> that by chance a lot of what's on my current TBR, the list of books that I really want to get to uh, soon is actually classics. A lot of the literature on there is pre-1970s and even more of it's actually pre the 1900s altogether so what we often term as classics or modern classics and I thought perhaps it might be interesting to share with you the 10 classics in particular that I really want to get to in, in the rest of the year. And you guys can perhaps tell me your thoughts on those books if you've read them, where you think I should start and what ones you'd like to hear about in particular. It'll also hopefully hold me to reading these books in 2018. So without further ado, this is my current classics TBR. So these are in no particular order, but the first book that I would really like to get to very soon actually, I think it's a book I'm going to try and read in February. I'm just going to find out if my library has a copy because I don't have one and that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Yes, I have managed to go through my entire 25, almost 26 years on planet Earth without reading Frankenstein. I am familiar with the story, like I'm sure many of us are. It's one of those classics that's really seeped its way into sort of public consciousness. There's so many film adaptations or other stories that are in some way inspired by Frankenstein that I would really like to finally read that original story. I think Mary Shelley as an author and a woman is a fascinating person. Her, her husband and her mother are all historical people that I find really interesting and how can I better understand them than reading their work? So one of the books I really want to prioritise is Frankenstein. Now I know there's two main versions of this book, there's the one that I think is the most traditionally read and um, published version and then there's the original text, um, unedited, the way Mary Shelley originally wrote it. I can't say for certain which version I'm going to read because I don't have a copy yet but I'll be really interested to know if you guys have read both and perhaps have thoughts on them um, and I can see what I can do, maybe my library will have options and that will help me but yes, finally I want to get to Frankenstein. Now my next book is equally a little bit shameful that I haven't read. Now I don't really feel shame with unread books. I, I don't. I use it as a very throwaway remark. This is just a very popular book and I think it's had a bit of a resurgence in popularity as well in the past year or two and that is 1984 by George Orwell, one of the most famous pieces of dystopian literature I think there is, written in 1949 and set in a hypothetical 1984 in which uh, the world is under hyper surveillance and it sounds absolutely fascinating. This is one that although I'm familiar with the premise of, I'm perhaps not as familiar with the entire plot of so I'm sure there'll be so many more surprises in that book for me and I'm really excited to kind of understand a lot of cultural references that people make to it that I perhaps haven't before and maybe understand some of its influences on the dystopian genre so 1984 I will read. Next up is actually a play by Shakespeare. Now I think I have read four or five Shakespeare plays to date. Macbeth, Midsummer Night's Dream, Romeo and Juliet, Winter's Tale and The Tempest. So. Uh, five, but one I'd really like to prioritise reading soon, although there's lots of Shakespeare's plays that I'd really like to get to, especially some of the more popular ones that are referenced a lot, like Othello and Hamlet. Um, I'd like to read Anthony and Cleopatra, given its classical roots. But the one that's really, you know, at the top of my Shakespeare to read list is Titus Andronicus. And the reason I really want to read this one is because it's in part inspired by a Greek myth the myth of Procne and Philomela, which is a central myth to my PhD thesis and I am slightly obsessed with it, although I, uh, in my plan I am soon to move on to writing more about Helen of Troy, but I have been so, so into Procne and Philomela over the past few months, years, going in depth with their story and studying it in antiquity, so I'd love to read a piece of reception literature and, and takes inspiration for that myth and see what Shakespeare did with it. On well, the topic of plays, one book I do actually already have a copy of and I'd like to read this year is Antigone by Sophocles. You saw me mention this in my general reading goals video and that is that I want to have read all of the Greek tragedies and I've certainly read more than half of the surviving extant Greek tragedies. We're not going to talk about the fragmentary ones at the, at the moment. So I'd like to power through with that in general and one of the ones again that's at the top of that list is Antigone by Sophocles. It is one of the most famous I think Greek tragedies in modern days. A lot of people I think read it in school. I didn't do any classical literature in school so I, I missed out on that. But it's one that I think 
so many people who haven't even done classics degrees have read that I feel a little bit like I should have read it. I am familiar with the myth, but Euripides always puts his own little spin on these stories, so I'd really like to see how, how he brings it to life. Antigone is the story of Oedipus's daughter who has lost both of her brothers and is trying to fight for them to have a proper burial. Obviously there's lots of themes in there, but um, that's the main premise. A couple more classics I have physical copies of include The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. If you've been around on my channel for a long time you'll know that I'm already a big fan of John Wyndham. I've read four of John Wyndham's novels and some of his short stories and Chrysalids is the one I'd really like to get to next. Um, I've heard a lot of praise for this one, I know my friend Jen really likes it and if I have a friend that really likes a book it makes me all the more enthusiastic to get to it so I can understand that joy, perhaps talk about it with them. And I already know I love John Wyndham's writing style, I just think it's really pleasant to read and he had a really interesting imagination, he wrote kind of classic sci-fi novels and this one is set in a post-nuclear apocalyptic world. So I'm sure it will be really, really interesting. And then I also have a classic that my mum has been recommending to me for years, and that is A Great Love by Alexandra Kollontai. Alexandra Kollontai was born in the late 1800s and um, lived into the 1900s. She was born in Russia and was a radical political activist and, of course, an author. And this novel was first published in 1923. It explores a female activist and her sexuality and her passion and her relationships with other activists and um, kind of coming to know herself. So I think it's definitely a feminist novel and like I said my mum's been recommending it to me for years because she really enjoyed it when she read it in her 20s and thought perhaps I would as well and this is her copy so I'm excited to get to it. Another piece of classical literature I want to get to or finish is a Roman one, is Ovid's Heroids. This is a book I'm actually already past halfway through at the moment so it's just about finishing this one and I'm really enjoying it. Ovid's an author I've always really enjoyed reading and this is actually a collection of letters Ovid wrote from the perspective of mainly women from Greek mythology to like their lovers or their ex-lovers or people they have unrequited love for. There's a few other different relationships in there, but a lot in that vein. So letters from characters like Penelope to Ulysses, or Odysseus if we're talking Greek mythology, or Bryces to Achilles, those kind of relationships and characters. He gave his interpretation of perhaps some of what was going through their mind um, during the time that they were with or not with this person and it's really really interesting. I'd also like to finally get to White Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. This book is a sort of prequel to Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, of course written by another author. Um, but if you're familiar with Jane Eyre, then this story follows a character that we meet in Jane Eyre um, prior to the events of Jane Eyre. I obviously don't want to spoil anything for those of you that haven't read Jane Eyre, but I absolutely adored Jane Eyre and I have heard such amazing things about this book. I think it would be so interesting to get a version of um, this character's life and well, multiple characters' lives prior to the events of Jane Eyre. I think it's also one of those novels that gives voice to a female character that has very little voice in another story. So I am really looking forward to finally getting around to this one and it's really not very long so I don't have any excuse. I do have one other Euripides play that I'd like to read. Like I said, I'm on a track to read the, all the Greek tragedies and another one that I am really prioritizing in the next few weeks or months is Andromache. In Andromache we follow the wife of Hector, Andromache, after the Trojan War once her husband has now passed away and she is now the slave of a Greek soldier, specifically Neoptolemus, Achilles' son. And lastly, I would like to get a little bit more of my Jane Austen on. So I have only read two Jane Austen novels in the past, but adored both of them, despite knowing the plots, having seen multiple adaptations on screen of both Northanger Abbey and Mansfield Park. I just thought they were wonderful novels. Jane Austen has such a way with words and characters, and you really feel enveloped by her stories. So I'd like to read another one. There are of course four of which I could choose from, Emma, Sense and Sensibility, Persuasion, or Pride and Prejudice. Now, particularly, I am feeling like I would either like to read Sense and Sensibility or Persuasion next. So if you have any thoughts on whether I should go for Sense and Sensibility or Persuasion, let me know. But 
one of those two is definitely on my immediate TBR. But that is my current classics TBR, at least the top 10. I think I could probably get to most of these in the next year as I'm feeling like reading classics at the, at the moment and I have a real array of different classics from different time periods so they'll all read very differently. If you've read any of these books I'd love to hear what you thought of any of them and do you have any classics on your TBR that you'd like to get to in the near future? Do let me know but until next time guys happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!